Are you ready to go again? It's week number two of our Better Together Afghan with my friend Jeannie and I. We're gonna push you into week number two. I've always wanted to use my favorite stitch in a stitch along. It is the Catherine wheel stitch. We are gonna do a whack of stitches today. Once you understand the concept, you'll see how the repeat works and you'll be able to fire it off really quite nicely. Again, the way that we've arranged our colors is that it will work out for your ball counts at the end. But of course, if you wanna change something, you go ahead and do so with your color arrangement. Just be mindful that you will change your yarn quantities. So let's get together and better together. And this is week number two, and let's head on into the studio now. Well, welcome to week number two. In week number two, I really love the Catherine wheel stitch. It's my ultimately my most favorite thing ever in crochet and what you see here is these things. So I learned this when I was 14 and actually in fact I was doing it wrong for like a gazillion years and I figured out that I was doing it wrong because I was misreading the diagram instructions. So that's something that when you do something wrong and you keep doing it wrong it ends up becoming right because you don't see that there's a problem and you're still happy with your results. So remember if you ever stick your hook in the wrong hole just keep your stick in your hook in the wrong hole and you'll have great results. So you will notice that this is a big section just like you see but you will notice that on the second page of this is that their diagram is not very big at all because it's a matter of getting a repeat. So what we need to pay attention to the most is that when we go to start and do our first sh uh, shells that we will be talking about is that we just have to skip uh, a number of stitches uh, in a particular way in order to get those to work out. So you'll notice that when we're going to do this uh, particular pattern. So the underside and the overside which makes up these is the same each and every time. So when you get here it just looks like this. So it's just a matter of repeat, 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 repeat. And so we wanted to really kind of make that yarn really pop. So we just have a sequential uh, distance like this. And then eventually when you get closer to the top we end at the end of the Catherine wheel stitch just do a single crochet and then we get ready for week number three. So this is week number two. Let's begin. So let's move along to week number two here of the Better Together Afghan designed by myself and Jeannie. So what we have here is that we're gonna do a Catherine wheel stitch uh, section. It's a big beautiful section. It's really quite fabulous. Now the thing we need to watch for the most is to first pass around and then once we get that done there's a special tip that is done. So when you get to like for example you're gonna start off this side and go across but when you come to the other side you're going to notice that we have to skip uh, something new. So in order to keep the balance. So that's something that's gonna we're gonna concentrate on today. Once you get the first pass around it's pretty much set up for the rest of these uh, rounds. So what you're seeing one round circle is actually two uh, rounds. So we have the bottom half and then the top half. So I wanted to cycle through some of the colors that we had in order to play with this particular concept. Then have some balancing points that you see within this uh, brown section here and then continue out. So this whole section we're going to just move out. It's just a matter of repeating over and over and over the steps once you get yourself established. So I'm gonna show you the start. I'm gonna show you one one half that is the bottom and then the top half and then you can do the remaining of this on your own because it's all the same. It's just a matter of it's getting wider so there's more indentations in and you're gonna finish off just doing this half section here and then that's where we're gonna leave you today. So without further ado let's uh, concentrate. Let's show you the diagram and let's see if you're up for this challenge today. So here's what the diagram looks like. We've finished off in the gray section here and so we're now going to introduce this new um, sections that we're going to do. So you're gonna see that there's a lot of sprays in the sense of um, lots of double crochets here in the corner to turn the corners and then we're just gonna get ourselves established. So we have to watch when we hit the other side here. So they're, they're not all equal on each side. So for example let me just clarify. So when you go to start off you'll start off here and then when you get to the other corner here you have to skip something extra over here in order to keep the balance. Then you start off this side just like this side and then when you get to this corner you just have to um, just watch it and watch that extra stitch that we need to throw in. So it was the only way to kind of keep the balance on this particular project and I'm sorry I'm man explaining at this moment but I want you to be paying attention to that because if you run into that unequal balance you're gonna say what's going on? Well that's what's going on. We have to fake it at one point. So once we get our first one established then we're gonna begin the next row which is the underside and then we then come around and do the over row. So the under row then will then be right here again and then continuing and then the over row and the only difference is that you're getting bigger and bigger than on the corner so you have more spaces to fill in. I love this stitch. It's my most favorite stitch in the whole wide world. And let's begin the Catherine wheel stitch round number 14. We're gonna begin with the color D if you're curious. 
you can also see that in the instructions. And we're gonna start right off in a chain two corner space. And we're going to attach like so. So attach and then make sure everything's nice and tight and chain three. So one, two, three. This counts as a double crochet so I need you to put 11 more double crochets in. So now that you know that, you know that each corner is gonna have 12 because the chain three counts as one of them and then another 11. So let's count those up together. So let's just count the chain three as one and then this is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And lots in there, right? So now that you have your twelve, let's just shift it a bit for myself. And so we need to skip a set amount of stitches in order to make this happen. So we are going to skip a total of two stitches. So this one here that is partially covered is a stitch. So don't miss that one. So one, two, and go to the third and single crochet. Then you're going to skip two more stitches, one, two, and go to the third and you are going to apply a total of seven double crochets. So seven double crochets make up the top of a shell and when you're going to do the bottom of the shell, how many do you think are gonna come together? Mm -hmm. Seven, that's right. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. So skipping two, go to the third single crochet, skipping two, one, two, go to the third and seven more. So I want you to do this all the way across to the first corner and then I'll show you uh, what to do when you get that corner because there's something special there and then we'll carry on around and this is round number 14. So as you hit the first corner, you're gonna do this with all the corners, is that you see that you run out of stitches. So if you skip two and then start that corner there, you're going to be in a problem. So what I figured out during the prototype is that you're only gonna skip one stitch after this shell and you're gonna single crochet in the next and then treat the corner like you normally would with just 12 double crochets. So let's count those out together. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So because we had an improviser, you won't see it in the project unless you tell somebody. So then you you're going to skip two then to start the new co uh, the new side. So that's the first one right there. So if you have to shift it to see it. So one, two, go to the third and then skipping two, go to the third and then put seven. And you'll do this all the way around. I'm gonna leave the rest of this round, round number 14 for you to finish and I'll see you at the end of this round. Now that I'm all the way back around, I'm skipping only one single crochet in, in the next and technically if this was a brand new fresh corner I would skip that one and just do my 12 but it's already there. So you wanna slip stitch to the top of the first chain three and you wanna be done with this color. So this would be considered the top side of a project like of one of those. So now we're gonna do the underside using uh, going around with uh, the same color twice and then we're gonna be doing that next. So fasten this yarn off and let's begin round number 15 next which is a fun round. With my color C, I'm now going to start the underside of a circle and then I'll use color C to do the overside to create the full circle. So what we need to do is we need to look at this and we need to see the first post and I need you to count to the fourth one. So count that first chain three. So one, two, three, four. The fourth is the one you're going to join to and when you join, recommending that you do a standing single crochet. So just wrap the hook, pull through but don't pull through the first loop yet and pull through two now. And therefore you'll have a single crochet. If you don't wanna do that, just pull through chain one, one single crochet in there. This looks a little bit nicer. So we're now going to chain three. So one, two, three. This is how you'll do your corners. And you'll come in and you're gonna use the next four stitches on the outside of this. So wrap the hook and going into the next stitch, pull through, pull through two and hold. So you're doing a four uh, double crochet cluster. So then wrap the hook, the next one, pull through, pull through two and hold. Next one and hold 
and do one more time. It's the fourth one. So you'll have five loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all five and now you need to chain three. So one, two, three and single crochet into the very next stitch. So there is your first corner. So it'll look like it's pointing off like a regular corner which it should. So let's show you how to do the underside of these circles. They're always the same. So you're just gonna chain three to begin and this takes that stitch so it's the center point of that circle. So the next seven stitches in a row are going to be making up your circle. So with this one here plus the seven you'll have eight loops on your hook when you're done. So just yarning over and going in to the next one, pull through, pull through two and hold it. And keep doing that until you see eight on your hook. Now myself because this is my most favorite stitch and I learned this when I was a kid, the easiest way to do this is that I keep doing them the eight, the um, trying to get my seven until I physically can see eight loops on the hook. So I just say okay there's four, is there four? No. So I just literally use my finger, separate them and it's a really quick way for me to count. So there's four, there's four. Pull through all eight of those loops and you're going to chain three. So one, two, three. It's the only way for you to get to the next one over here. So in the very next stitch you're going to single crochet and now you've just completed the underside of a circle. So I'll show you two again. So just chain three. So that takes you to create the center point in the next one and then you're gonna collect the next seven. And how many loops are you looking for on the hook? Any answers? It's eight. The only time it's not gonna be eight is when it's a corner which I'll show you the next corner when we get there. So there's four and four. Pull through all eight of those and then chain three. So one, two, three, single crochet in the next and keep moving on until you get to the corner. So you'll see everything is gonna be really quite fun and fabulous and then you're gonna keep moving and I'll see you at the first corner. Make sure that you know how to turn the corner and then I'll leave this row for you. And this is how you're gonna continue to do these rows when you're filling them in underneath. The only difference is that you'll have more circles completed therefore you'll have more indentations to fill in as it gets bigger. So I've now come up to the corner. I've finished this last indentation in and I've chained three to get myself ready. So we need to turn this corner. So we're gonna single crochet in the next one available to you and we need to create that corner slot. So how to do that is that you chain three. Again that changes the center point and then you're gonna collect the next four. And you'll do this each time you hit a corner that looks like this. So you'll see five loops, pull through all five, chain three and then single crochet in the next and then begin all over again to go across, collect the next seven, keep going across, make sure you put your single crochets in, in the tops of these as you did it before and I'll see you at the end of this round. This is round number 15. So I'm gonna share with you a cheating technique that I do. Don't tell anybody though, I'm telling you though. So what happens is say for example you didn't put seven in one of these. I did but what if you didn't? And then you get to this point and you realize oh geez I can't actually do seven because it's gonna make the, the wheels kind of lean over. Because in the next round you're just focusing on the center point of these you can easily just only do six if you really had to. If you had an extra one you could do a total of eight and kind of put it together and it will be barely noticeable if you have to ever do that. So there's always a way to cheat the system uh, when there's an opportunity to do so and because one of the reasons why I chose this stitch is that it allows you to get back on track just in case you go off the rails. So you're only using the center points and these single crochets as your focal point uh, for doing that. So if you have to add in a stitch or subtract out a stitch you will probably barely even notice it and then once you move on with the project you'll probably forget you ever did it. So it's a neat kind of idea. So um, if you see something like that don't frog it. You don't need to. You can cheat it and uh, just don't tell anybody or you can admit to cheating it and tell people to find the mistake. <laughs> Uh, if you wanna call it that at all or just say it's improvisation or something. So it's a great way to be able to um, figure things out just in case you go off the rails. I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm coming up to the end of this and I'm just finishing off the final indentation in. I'm going to leave this color on. I have actually done this kind of stitch using a solid color once. Um, I just thought if you're gonna go all through the effort you might as well change the colors and have a little bit of um, fun as you're doing it. 
So coming all the way back around. Don't forget the chain three. So one, two, three, and then just join it to the first single crochet like that. So this is what it would look like then going all the way around. So you kind of have a point if you really wanna be imaginative on the end here and then you have your uh, pieces. Now what we're about to do is the same thing that you just did down here. The difference is, is now you actually have a physical spot to aim for in order to have these circles match. So let's move on to round number 16 and then I'm gonna leave the remaining of these wheels with you to do that. So you can reverse the video back then to do the underside again to review if you have to and then the top side which I'm about to do now. So right where we're sitting is in the single crochet. So chain one and single crochet in the same one. And then in the center point here where they all came together, you're going to apply 12 double crochets. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Once you have your twelve you can just shift this around. So your single crochet is gonna be in the next single crochet and then the center point of the next one is gonna be where the next seven go in. So remember the top sides like we did down here is seven. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then single crochet in the next single crochet and then the next center point seven again and you're gonna do that all the way to the end. You can see the round circles are forming and you're gonna go all the way around. I'll see you in the first corner just to make sure you're turning properly and then we're gonna leave you off to the races and let you complete the rest of the section uh, but we have uh, uh, just a little bit to review after we get this whole section done and I will meet you at the first corner in just a moment. When you get to the next corner I've just single crocheted in the last single crochet and in the cent uh, center point of the corner is another 12 double crochets that circle it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten, eleven, and twelve. And once your twelve are in, single crochet in the next single crochet, and then move along this side, just doing the same thing. So this would, would look like on the corner again. These kind of gaps, kind of just uh, uh, eventually, they kind of just fill in naturally, and you want to go all the way around. So I'll meet you at the end of this round, and I'll make sure that you're kicking off properly, and then we'll leave the rest of the uh, section for you. So I'm coming all the way back around and I have my seven in and then I'm just going to slip stitch then to the first single crochet and then fasten off so I don't wanna do any more. Where you're going to screw up, if you're gonna screw up at all in this particular concept, it will be in the corners. Sometimes people forget, including yours truly, to forget to put in that 12 here. Sometimes I just did seven by accident uh, when I was doing a prototype of this. So that's something that you just gotta watch out for. Just make sure your corners are 12 double crochets when you're going around. Something that you can't fake later just in case you need to know that. So we're now going to just continue the remaining of this section and I have to complete with you one more round after this section is complete which I will show you in the end of this video. So we're going to now move on to um, color A. So remember how we started before. It's exactly how you started just like you see. So it's gonna be the fourth one up. So one, two, three, and fourth is where you're going to attach. Do your standing single crochet, it looks nicer. And then chain three and then pick up the next four. Go right up over top of your straggler two to trap it into position. 
just like that and then pull through and then chain three. So one, two, three and then coming to the next one and then start going around. So it's really not that hard to do. You just gotta follow through. So let's go back to the photograph and show you what you're up to and then I'll be back in just a moment. When looking at this photograph we started off we did the blue and then this here is the green. It's the first circle. So you have one more circle, two, three and four to do and see the color sequence. So just follow that along and then you're gonna do one underside and then we're gonna do one round of the final of this. So this white will be doing that in this particular series today. So just look at the photograph and match up the colors that you want. You can make it random if you wish. It's up to you but it's been designed so that you can maximize the amount of yarn that has been prescribed for this. So I have a lot of homework to do now and when I see you I will be finishing up this underside which will be the same color and then I'll show you how to do the final one and then you'll move on to week number three after this. So good luck and I hope to see your creativity on Facebook and I'll be back in just a moment. When I last left you we were just down here and so I've expanded all the way and I have all the colors matching. We're gonna do our last round for this week and it is round number 26 using the color A and we're going to join up on top of the corner. So let me just create a slip knot to begin. You could also do um, a well I'm gonna do a standing single crochet. So let's just go to the corner here and let's zoom in. So to start you want to go right into the corner one so where it's all of them have been put together and I wanna do a standing single crochet. So just put it onto the hook, pull through and then pull through the two and that's a standing single crochet and then chain two is in the corner and then in the same one that you would like to do that it's just a single crochet again. So it's a really easy uh, round to be able to understand. So the next section right here there's going to be three single crochets. So one, two and three. So you're going right up over top of that. You're gonna skip to the next one here and then three into that one too. So one, two and three and then go to the next one. So you're skipping over the middles of these semicircles that you have. So once you get that done go to the next one. You're gonna do that all the way across. So I wanted a nice easy round for you. So when you get to the next corner when you get there so you're gonna single crochet three times into this one here as you're making your way and in the point it'll be a single crochet chain two single crochet and I want you to do this all the way around for round number 26 and that will conclude off this week's. So when you get back around you're just putting your three single crochets in the last gapping space and then you're just gonna slip stitch to the beginning single crochet and we're gonna end this color and end this week for the tutorial. So that's it for now and we'll just go back and we'll see you next week as we continue our journey together. Well hopefully by this point you've got week number two done. We'll see you next time as we continue into week number three because it's gonna be Jeannie's turn because I just made her do the song and dance for the Catherine Wheel Stitch. She's gonna make me do the song and dance for week number three. We'll see you again and please use our hashtags of the crochet crowd as well as yarn inspirations on Instagram and by all means please keep posting your ideas and your work in progress with our Facebook pages. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.